Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitch. What are you poking at? What was it? There's like a thread or something? Cut that. Okay. No, cut that. No, I'm, I'm leaving it. <laughs> Curtis grabbed my pants. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> That'll be the Maybe that'll misleading. be the intro. Yeah, that was very. Curtis mis- grabbed my pants. That was yeah. very misleading, but okay. On <laughs> purpose. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast, where we discuss the spirit of Kentucky. My name's Perry. Welcome welcome back. Hooray. Did you hear me, like, run out of energy, like, yeah, towards the end of that? I was yeah, like, name just now. <laughs> my name's Perry. Hey. But, but then I'm not so excited. Uh, I, so. I very that's quick, the only thing I care about. I very quickly ran out of energy at the end there, but that's okay. Anyway. Uh, so, as you can probably tell, Chad and Sarah are not on this week. No, uh, they, they, they were unavailable. They sound very different. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, the, the... Sarah, why do you sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Your voice has dropped like a whole octave. <laughs> this is what I sound like today. I have a cold. <laughs> uh, so, we got the home base boys back this week. What's up, guys? Sleepy boys. Sleepy, sleepy, boys. sleepy home base boys. <laughs> yes. um, guys, how y'all been? Been. I've been. You've been? I've been yeah. as well. Oh, we've yeah. both been. Yeah. Yep. I've been fine. That's the attitude we want coming into it. Yeah. <laughs> a fun filled hour of, of drinking. <whistles> yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be a fun episode because we're drinking nothing but barrel proof bourbons tonight. Bourbon. So Harry, all bourbons are made in a barrel. That's <laughs> That's proof of the bourbon, right? Oh, That's here we go. Here we go. Let's get started. Here we go, oh, Tanner. <laughs> No, we're all, we're drinking uh, uh, cast strength bourbons tonight, and yeah, we're going to be talking yeah. about that a little bit. So, um, our first fir- boys, our first boy. <laughs> this is the first time I've had the uh, Maker's Mark cast strength. Yeah, this is our first pour of the of the show. Is the Maker Mark Maker's right. Mark cask? Um, it's one hundred and ten point nine proof. This is the um, same that they have at the distillery, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, I it, like, and it it changes, you know, from release to release, sure. but uh, you I, know, it, it all kind of hovers around in the one hundred and ten. I guess, I mean yeah, I guess yeah. I've had a shot of it. Sure. I've sure. been to the the distillery so I've had a, a shot. I personally like this a lot better than I do the regular makers. Mm. I just think that it has more flavor to I it. Like you mm. say that a lot about, about a lot of bourbon. Yeah. Well, I'm not a, I'm not a huge makers guy. Yeah, so. and we we've, we've talked about it many times on the show too, but like makers is always going to be good, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's like, you know, a go-to for me. Yeah. Um but I think that it is kind of a staple, um, one way or another. It's a staple. I don't necessarily think that I would ever... I'm not like, I'm going to drink Maker's Neat, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm also not thinking about going out and getting a bottle anytime soon. Sure. Yeah. You know? That's yeah, um, not something I have to have in my yeah. disposal. No, no, not at all. But this this release, though, I think that this is a very good... Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good expression of the the regular makers um tanner's looking curiously at uh, yes, I'm excited for what's that. what's actually going to be next have you not had that yet before mm-hmm. yet before bottle. really um that will i uh, we'll wait until we get into uh, the next pour of it and we'll talk we'll talk about it then um hmm. but i do want to uh, ask you guys first what you've been drinking recently hey this bottle sorry <laughs> 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 this bottle has an email on it? No way. Is it, for, is it a phone contact? number? Is it for Buffalo Trace? Uh, no, it's for... Can I say what this is? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's stag at bourbonwhiskey.com. Interesting. And then there's a phone number, which I'm not going to recite on air, but... Is there a huh. bourbon... Is there really a bourbonwhiskey.com, or is that just a weird email server that they started up? You gotta look it up. For? Right? Yeah, I'm about to. <laughs> That's interesting. That's very strange. That's so bizarre. Yeah. It's like they were... Were you meaning to put the website and ended up putting the... No, that's a full, that's a full on email. We should email it. Is it whiskey with an E? Yes, it is. Okay. We should email it and just be like, do you ever get any emails? Yeah, like, hey, what's this for? Yeah, Great. why did you okay. put that on there? So it has now been changed to greatbourbon.com. Oh, that's worse. It must be of legal age to enter, as every alcohol yep. website 
Yeah. Which is annoying. Requires it is, especially if like you can't buy it anyway. And also, yeah, I know. I'm sure it's yeah. legal. Like also, but ki- like if you're like 18, you'd be like, sure. I mean, it's a button. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's okay. like it's yeah, like when there was that. this like thing for adult websites. The same thing. It was like you must be 18. Like a 14 year old kid can click <laughs> enter. It's a, it's not that hard. Yeah. Okay. It's a terrible barrier. Here's for entry. here's my problem with this website. Okay. Um, other than that, it exists. Other than that, it exists. It is clearly owned by Sazerac. Mm. The way I can tell is Not that they have only Buffalo Trace and Old Not Barton Distill. No. Wait, I think I've seen this website. It's really, I mean, A, it's not very good. Like, oh, it's yeah. not a very good website. But also... This bottle's okay, design-wise. Design. Yeah, the, that, it, I'm not a big fan of the design yeah, of okay. the Stag Junior bottle. It is very... Um, stand, like, it's not it's just bad, there. it's not it's just good, there. it's just yeah. there. yeah. Um, it's just a bottle. This is okay. Yeah, I like that the label, or like the, 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 the screen front part of it is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and this sticker I don't mind either. Anyway, the that's enough about greatbourbon.com. Yeah. Um, anyway, what have you guys been drinking recently? <laughs> go, I go. I don't care. Go. All right, well, I've been drinking my 1792 Full Proof. The uh, pick that, uh, that Swan, Swan brought you? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I've been drinking that. And then also the Rebel Yell 10-year single barrel. How have you liked that? Oh, my gosh. It's so good. It's fantastic. It really cracks me up that regular Rebel Rebel Yell is not good. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, why would you do that? Just make like a good middle of the road. Sure. And then, you know, have a better one. Would you mind if we uh, had that on the show? No, like sure. reviewed it on the show. And yeah, interviewed it on the show. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> asked how it was. Now Rebel Yell ten year. Hey there. So when did you first start to realize that you were a bourbon? You're ten years old. Talk to me about that. <laughs> <laughs> you well, should be in school right now. Hard oak barrels. Oh, oh god, it's that? terrifying to think that you're drinking a child. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. <laughs> well, you went well. That's horrifying. As if there were a oh, child. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, is this bourbon a child? I guess if it's ten years. I mean, I guess. Look, I mean, you know what? This is a very strange yeah, we, conversation we to done. get into. But we yeah, anyway. That. Okay, so Rebel L10, we're going to have it on the show. Yeah, it's really good. Soon. Um, Tanner, what about you, bud? I practice what I preached. Preached is a weird past tense. I feel like should be like prot. <laughs> I thought the yeah, same. I was about to say the same thing. Chris Prot's my favorite actor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I practice what I preached, and I went and got a bottle of Elijah Craig Small very Batch, nice. and nice. love it. It's very good. It's... It's very good. Hard to beat. Yep. Yeah. Hard to beat. I, Go listen to two episodes ago. Yeah, and, it's um, very, very good. I liked it as much as I did on the show. Um, that's it. That's all I've had, yeah. really. Yeah. And um, then McKenna, I also got that. I, we. <laughs> I feel like that's just a, a given at this Staple. point anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, I cracked this bottle of Old Granddad 114 re- uh, recently. This isn't cast strength. This is just what I used to kind of warm up my palate yeah. um, before. Jim Beam product. Um, super nutty. I feel like um, it's become my role on the show to review the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like that bottle. Yeah, I, no, I, it feels like <laughs> it, it's like it's a it, it's a forgotten label. Not in like somebody it discovered like, it like twenty years down the road, thirty years down the road, but it's like ah, it's fine. Like nobody cares. It kind of feels like it's like a Sam's Club bourbon. You know what I mean? <laughs> like a general. <laughs> Sort of Does okay. I, I, can, I can see that. I can see that. That uh, generic. That's the, the word seal's word. really nice. I like that. Yeah, I the like seal's the seal good. Too. Yeah, yeah. It feels like a good it's like they spit off them. Yeah. I thought you were about to. No, I'm not the, gonna ruin your bottle. Yeah. The top of the cork's real nice too. It's got the one fourteen on it. Top of the cork too. Oh, I don't like the Cedar sort of plastic hospital wall decor they've got going on the top of the lid. You see this? Like this little. Like, oh yeah, like pattern. the nineties. The nineties wallpaper. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the plastic. It's like for because it's an audio medium. It looks like <laughs> when they try to make things that look like the water. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, like the, the yeah, like the, the like waves. A pool. Yeah. Yep. It's, it looks like that. Um, yeah, this bottle's water. And then I also uh, have been drinking a little bit more of the Wilderness Trail that we had last Ooh, week. Yes. Um, speaking of Wilderness Tanner Trail, um, yeah, you need to have some of it. Okay. I. It's upstairs. Wait. We'll do it. We'll do it another time. Um, speaking of Wilderness Trail, I. One of their scientists, Pat, Pat. Uh, sent us a message today uh, awesome. thanking us for the, the favorable review on, on oh, last cool. episode for the Wilderness Trail. And um, You was, think it would have done the same if it was scaling? Um, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> I mean, we haven't heard from uh, Woodford yet after the... Uh, <laughs> after the uh, 
uh, what was it? The cherry, cherry mal- malted cherry barley. Yeah, yeah, they haven't gotten in contact with us, but I do feel bad that like some distilleries listen and they're like, "Wow." <laughs> hey, real quick. <laughs> yes. I mean, I guess. Oh, oh, okay. I'll tell. I'll tell you about it in a second. Kurt, is this ahead. a project or something? No, no. I'll tell you about it in a second. I don't understand it. I know. I know. Kurt right, had a ahead, Kurt had sorry, a thought, and then sorry, I'll, sorry, I'll, sorry. I'll follow up with it. Uh, oh. I was just gonna say, like, you <laughs> know, at least now. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I was just saying, like, I mean, at least we're being honest about it. Uh, you know, I mean, I think we have a good. We watch out for distilleries and also, you know, sure, yeah, consumers, uh, consumers, because I mean, if there's a product that's not gonna hold up, then you know, wouldn't the distillers want that as well as the the consumers? But also. You know, when it's something that's so good, like Wilderness Trail was, I mean... Yeah. You don't want... I've, I've, I've read a lot about specifically games journalism, but you don't want to... It, it means more if you get a good review from people who don't do all good reviews. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that that's true. you have to be... I mean, we are honest on the show and mm-hmm. as discerning as we can be. So I would, I would rather have an eight from someone who's normally going to hover around the five range as opposed to someone who hovers around the eight range. Yeah, yeah um, and for sure. I think that became, that's what makes you a more rec- reputable reviewer too, is that mm-hmm. you're going to speak your mind. So I don't think yeah. that the stories are going to take umbrage with the fact that we might review something low if we don't like it, because for that's sure. just us being honest. And that, that increases the valuability of a good review for sure. And like we, we are always, I mean like the way I like to think of it is that we just don't pull our punches. Sure. You know, I mean, yeah. we, j- yeah, we're just very straightforward no about, about everything. Mm. Okay. To answer your question about my maker's yeah. cast strength bottle. Yeah. So, um, every year I, for Christmas, um, you know, you're an ambassador as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're an ambassador at maker's mark ambassador, it's just something you fill out a form for on online and gotcha. they send you stuff. Gotcha. Um, they give you a Christmas present every year. Oh, cool. And this year was these little, Oh, the ribbons. Bows. Little bow cats. And then the uh, Christmas themed label. Oh, cool. Um, so this bottle was actually a, a, a gift from my dad. Oh. Um, <laughs> for Christmas. And he put he put the, the uh, his label on there for me. And he did the same for my brother, too. But anyway, that's why cool. it's on there. And um, <laughs> Hey, it looks like it says, <laughs> not to dunk on your dad's handwriting. No, it definitely does. Why does it say Pebby? Oh, that was that was what my little brother called me when uh, when, uh, uh, when he was little ours. and couldn't say my name. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Uh, spoiler alert: the uh, Booker's that we're going to review too has Booker uh, T. No, not the wrestler. Booker no, not the wrestler Booker no. T. Um, has uh, the historical figure Booker T. Washington father themes to it as well. So we'll get to it when the time All comes. Right. I yeah. uh, I drank it on the. I've been doing live streams uh, on our Instagram mm-hmm. um, as. Kurt knows. Um, I know too. Every week. Okay. Well, sorry, I didn't know. I didn't know you'd been you'd seen it or <laughs> I've had learned. Watched, watched a little bit of it. Um, I didn't catch, I didn't catch a lot, but I saw a little bit of it. Uh, yeah. A little um, bit after. Anyway. Huh. Um. What was I saying? Uh, live streams. Oh, live streams. Yeah, I drank this on the live stream. Uh, the entire bottle. Yeah, it's completely gone now, and we're still going to review it on the uh, on the episode. Um. And uh, talked a little bit about the uh, about the history Just of it. Interested in this? Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll go over all that again when the uh, when the time comes to review it on the on the episode. But until then, we're going to be talking about barrel proof bourbons a little bit. Yeah. Um, and as we do that, the cat is going to run over our laps. Beautiful. And we're going to move on to the Stag Junior. Um, you've never had Stag Junior. No. You've never had Stag Junior. Correct. Um. Stag Jr. is basically the little brother of um, the George T. Stag release from the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Okay. Um, we had the William LaRue Weller release yes. uh, right. on our second episode ever. Yeah. Yep. Um, Which I, I just want to say, like, that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I so wish that we would have had it, like, our 16th episode in. I agree. I but, agree. you know... It was still good then, and I sure. still have a little bit left, so yeah. I can enjoy. Now. And we will go back and review it as well. Yeah, in the future, um, gentlemen, pass me your four roses glasses if you don't mind. That's your Jim Beam glass. There, I understand. <laughs> um, hello, Lucy. Hello, hello. dog. Hello. 
<laughs> that was the dog saying hello. By the way, that was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy, do you want any, any bourbon? Stag Junior. Okay. We have a fourth uh, <laughs> fourth guest on the show right now. Okay, Lucy <laughs> says no. <laughs> Um, just had, but. Ah, well, that'll do it. Okay. Um, again, this is a barrel proof release. This is 130. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That's um, a lot. Uncut and unfiltered, um, which we will talk a little bit more about, like what that means. Um, yeah, a little Canadian there. We'll talk what? a little more about about it. Yeah, about it. Um, we'll yeah. talk. We'll talk more about it in the uh, in the topic discussion and everything. Um, Tanner's going for it. I think. Tried it. Yeah, I thought he did. Oh, what do you think? It's not as uh, as much heat as yeah. you expected. No, no. I think there's Tanner's not a fan. Is that what that was? Yeah, it's whatever. It's fine. Okay. It's not. I, I will say it doesn't feel one thirty. I'm just not. Explain the. Eh. Yeah. What do you, What don't you like about it? No, nah, there's just not a lot there for me. Really interesting. It feels a little okay. bland, kind of. Yeah. Huh. That's really. That's really interesting. Might be my palate. I don't know. I get a lot of. Um, I I think I, I said this before. I get a lot of like, leather and vanilla, on it. Like it has a very leathery. You know that leather taste you love. You know when <laughs> you're just. You know up. when you love rawhide. Yeah. Thank you. Is that a We've, good thing though? I'm just gonna. I think it is. Really? I like. I really like those like darker, mm, deeper right. notes. I do too. So, I mean I that's just. And that's just a nothing like. <laughs> Draw a dry cowhide. <laughs> just my favorite flavor profile. I mean, that's just my. <laughs> that's pretty much I guess my palate. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. <Fine> muscle, but, <laughs> but that's like leather texture, right? That's not leather flavor. It has. It goes both ways. Okay. Like if you describe it as beef jerky, I'm far far more favorable. But to it it's also like what it smells like. I guess. Sure. Yeah. It's no. I get that. Which I like because I don't think I've looked leather. <laughs> Let's journey back through the history of Lucy and discover whether or not she's actually it's a licked a piece journey of to take. Yeah. Um, I don't know where that was going. Anyway, um, I, I, what I like about this is that, like, if we're smelling and tasting the same things, that to me indicates quality because it means that there's a consistency to the product. Um, and, but I can understand where you would be less interested with the palate based on the nose because sometimes after, you know, smelling or nosing something it's nice to discover something else on the palate yeah um, it, uh, i don't know it's just not doing anything for me okay uh let's do a little experiment then okay let's uh, add a couple drops of water to it sure so we're doing the real scientific way kurt doesn't want to i don't want water i'm good <laughs> i'm happy I'm, with what i have i added about uh five or six drops of water mine was about a quarter second of a pour, if that makes sense. <laughs> I don't have a dropping method. Probably not so scientific. Yeah, it was just like a boop. Okay, here's what, I, here's what I'm going to suggest. Yep. Um, it takes a while. Let's just, well, okay. Yeah. Let, let's leave this okay. for sure. for a few minutes while we yep. talk yep. Um, to give the water a little bit of time to mingle with the, the bourbon. Yep. So, mm. Hold on, i got to take off the dog's collar, too. We're going to go upstairs. Okay. Well, here she comes. She's collarless. She's naked. Oh, no. <laughs> That was the dog. It wasn't my wife. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> my clothes. <laughs> what is... Hello, strangers. <laughs> what is this voice? <laughs> this episode is rated PG-13. <laughs> For bad accents? <laughs> Why is it rated PG-13? <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay, anyway, let's talk about Barrel Proof Bourbons and what they are and um, like their importance in, in the field of bourbon. So the background basically on it is that um, <laughs> they're uncut, they're unfiltered, um, which means that they haven't been proofed down and they haven't been given the treatment of non-chill filtering, um, which removes the fatty acids from, from bourbons. Mm. There are some um, bourbons that have been proofed out that are still cut but are un- are, have not gone through the chill filtering, like Jim Beam Distiller's cut. Mm. Um, which just came out for the first time last year. I think you've had it. Have you had it no. yet? Okay. Um, it's distinctly different mm. from, I mean, aside from the fact that it's 20 proof points higher than Jim Beam White Label. Sure. Um, 
it's so much more rich in flavor um, than the white label is, which is that makes sense. You know, been super proofed down, gone through all this filtering and everything. Yep. Um, <clears throat> personally, I like when um, they leave some of that in. You know, mm. I think that it adds a lot of flavor to it. Um, anyway, so barrel proof bourbons. You know, we we have three different. Um, ones on the table and they range from 110 to 130 i think it can get up to as high as 145 or, 100, or 150 is it 145 or 145 okay yeah um the highest barrel proof bourbon i've ever had has been 139 um and it was a it was an elijah craig barrel proof um so i mean not terribly far off from the stag jr sure um but anyway, okay. We've had a few on the show before. We've had 1792 foolproof. Yeah. William LaRue Weller. Yeah. Uh, Blanton straight from the barrel. Yep. And okay. then now these two leading up to the bookers. Based on your all's experiences, uh-huh. do you all like them? And do you prefer them to proof down cut filtered bourbons here's my take I part my take <laughs> alright well that's a, another <laughs> show Stephen A. Smith not this one yeah uh, so my my take is this I think that probably not for me um I think that I am in a in what is the word I'm looking for here I'm in a time of my palate, <laughs> which is weird, uh, that I, I don't seek these out just yet, I sure. think. And honestly, I, I have a hard time keeping track of the differences f- wholesale. So, like, I don't know if you sat down a... Well, I probably could just from amount of alcohol, but if that wasn't a factor, I don't know if you sat down a barrel-proof a normal bourbon, somewhere in between. If you set those all three down in front of me without telling me what they were, I don't know if I could pick them out. I would say you probably couldn't based on your reaction to the Stag Jr. Sure, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and so I don't think that it's something that I necessarily would seek out, A, because I'm assuming the price point's a little higher, and B, I just don't know if it's something I want. Sure. Um, and it's not the experience I'm used to yet, and I, I can't say, oh, I like barrel proofs wholesale because I've, I've had so few that I'm sort of judging it based on the individual ones as opposed to what they kind of share overall. Sure. Sure. Kurt, what about you? And I don't even know, like, I don't know if I would be able to pick it out as well on, if you sent three with a, uh, like a blind taste test and I had sure. no clue. I don't know if I would be able to pick it out, not be, just because some barrel proofs to me don't taste like barrel proofs. Like the notes, I agree with you. the notes of them do, like you know you got those richer, deeper tones. But I don't think, like in terms of burn, you think of barrel proof and you're like, oh, I mean, at least I do. Well, I not I, burn, but you think of more of a heat. Yeah, more of a heat. It, okay, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get to a point in a second. But Tanner just took a sip of his. Yes. What do you think about it with a little bit of water? Yeah. Really? It's still yeah. has not changed. I mean, it's better. Okay. I prefer bourbon with a little water, personally. Yeah. But I think that, yeah, again, it's not... I agree that these... I, I, I get the leather thing. I get it. I don't think don't like that's it. favorable. Yeah. Sure. I don't want to drink sure. leather, <laughs> as bizarre <laughs> as that may sound. Um, it's not what I come to bourbon for. I think it's taking a lot of the... Uh, not the negatives, but the lesser qualities that I search out in bourbon and it's amplifying those mm-hmm. as opposed to the ones I want. So I think that's why I'm not liking it. See, I what do you think? I think adding the water messes takes with Takes away? I think it takes it away. Yeah. Kurt just had a sip of mine, by the way. That's yeah. what... Yeah, I, I like the... I will say I like the nose on it with, uh, with water a little bit better. I think that it brings forth a lot of the... There's a very strong, like... Brown sugar note on the nose See, not, with a oh, little bit nose. of water. I was say, yeah, I'm not, getting that in the taste not on the palate. It's not there on the palate. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, definitely there that. on the nose. I, though. I don't know. I mean, I think that's just how my palate is. You know, everything I drink, I like to have like a more of a bitter kind of, uh, you know, darker, rich. Yeah. 
no sure. that's just how my palate is like coffee I've always been drawn to coffee yeah because it has that like earthy mm-hmm. kind of dirt you know what I was gonna say before too is that I, I, I I've been like muddling around with this theory for a little <laughs> while like, and like I haven't <laughs> hey <laughs> cocktail joke yeah <laughs> um, and I haven't really put it forth and if I've said it to you guys stop me I can't remember for sure who all I've said this to um I have this theory that by adding water to distilled spirits or liquor in general brings forth the heat aspects of it or the ethanol of it. And the reason that I say that is because how often have we had barrel proof bourbons and gone, it doesn't drink like 130 proof. Mm. It doesn't drink like 140. That's true. Yeah. But we'll have 80 proof, 85, 86, 90 and go, gosh, there's a whole lot of burn or heat on that. Mm. That's interesting. And I, I, you know, I'm not scientific enough to know, you know, sure. the the verbiage behind yeah. it or whatever. But something to me doesn't quite line up with the idea that the higher the proof, the more ethanol, the more heat. Now, that doesn't go for everything because there have been hotter, higher proof bourbons that I've had. But it does seem like the lower the proof, the more burn the more, you know, people go, Bleh. you know, the like the <laughs> yeah. stereotypical face that yeah. people make yeah, when they I take a shot, that is. you know, I don't know. I, and it could be that just water and, and, uh, ethanol that comes from distilling spirits doesn't, doesn't mingle well. Yeah. You know, could be. Cats, I, cats I, I doing park more doesn't mingle yeah. well. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I think that's a really cool, like experiment to, to do, I mean, I don't know really anything about science or, or you know, the, chemi- either. the chemistry of those things. <laughs> How does but science? You know who would be, I mean, would be really cool is uh, the master distiller from Castle and Key because she's so. Oh, Marianne into, Barnes. Yeah, yeah, she's so yeah, into absolutely the the scientific part yes, of it because she has a science degree. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we. I, it, I'm sure she's probably done you know, multiple yeah. experience on this. We, we need to get her on the show regardless. I've been trying for, for a while and it just hasn't, hasn't quite worked out yet, uh-huh. but I am still, I, I would like, I, yeah. I would really, really like for Marianne to be on the show, but that's a conversation for another. Yeah. That's just interesting. Yeah. Like I wonder, yeah. And I, mean, I wonder I, if there's, I, is there something there or is there not like, exactly. You know, yeah. I would just like for someone to be like, no, you guys are crazy. Yeah. Yeah, y'all are idiots. <laughs> yeah. But or like, like adding, oh, maybe there might be. But adding water definitely dilutes the flavor. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. I I mean, we for for a very strong example, Blanton straight from the barrel. I mean, it tastes like a completely different bourbon from regular Blanton's. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've both we both We've all three. There's three of us here. <laughs> both plural. Sorry. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've both and. Yeah. We um, both. <laughs> uh, we've all three, you know, had plenty of experience with Blanton's. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I've, 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 of course, had Blanton straight from the barrel since we uncorked it. Mm-hmm. But it, it just seems like two completely different bourbons. Yeah. I mean, if you put them side by side, I wouldn't have been able to say, this is the same thing, one's just a lower proof. Yeah. The I flavors think. are different. Yeah. The proofs are completely different, yeah. but you can't really tell that. No, no. And I Based also, on heat. Sure, yeah. And that, and again, it goes back to, you know, yeah. what's... What makes it that? It frustrates me that I'm not going to... Like, I can't just do the experiments or have the know-how to yeah. do those experiments. But I know there's something there. There's got to be something there. <laughs> yeah. I need to get together with somebody who has a science degree and can <laughs> yeah, direct me in the right... Find a chemist. Anyway... With that being said, I think I like it 100 times better than without water than with. I like the nose, and we're talking about the Stag Junior. Um, I like the nose with water better than I do without water, but I do think I like the palate better mm. without the water. Yeah. But it, it and and Tanner remains neutral. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
remains <laughs> Wouldn't be a great uh, review on our scale for me. Mm. Just saying. Interesting. Well, hypothetically, then let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's it. just do I'm, overalls. I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. If you it, a general overall score, uh-huh. what would you put it at? And keeping in mind, this is about. And this is really going to dock your score, I know. Yeah. It's about $75 to $80. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that bourbon is terrible. a... Hold on. Do the math. <laughs> this is fun to watch. This is going to be bad. Um, There's smoke coming out of your ears. Yeah. <laughs> I'm steaming. Um, like a seven. Wow. So what's the what's the biggest drawback for you then the palette and the price? Uh yeah. Okay. The nose was fine. Yeah. Um, and then the finish was fine. Okay. So so we're talking like three, like a three, a two, and two ones. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, man. <laughs> what would you give it, Kurt? I would give it a thirteen. 12, yeah, I w- twelve I w- to thirteen. I was in the fourteen to fifteen range. Yeah, I would so. say twelve to thirteen. Yeah. Probably more thirteen. This is a collectible. Like amongst mm-hmm. bourbon collectors, yeah. <laughs> that's um, thirteen, and and it goes on secondary for two to three to four times as much. Don't pay that. No, no, absolutely don't. Absolutely don't. Especially with this one for me. Don't do no. it. No, I mean I Not don't. Worth. I don't think that it's worth one hundred and fifty to two hundred no. plus dollars. Um, I, I think, think that price, it's. I think it's worth what paid for it. I think so too. <laughs> I agree. But and eh. since second <laughs> and since secondary market. Bumps it up to like seventy five dollars is a lot of nine. Money. Uh, if it was a hundred, I'd be. I would pay. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't no. either. At hundred, this is a first for me. Yeah, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, usually like ah, all the money for the bourbon. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like none of the money for the bourbon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, somewhere in the no, I think seventy five eighty is what I would do. Yeah, yeah, twenty five. Perry, you? I mean, like I said, I think overall I would give it like a fourteen to fifteen. I mean, the palette would be a solid, like, three to four. Nose would probably be on the lower end, and I think finish would probably be squarely in the middle. Um, And I wouldn't say that the price is, like, incredible, because it's not. I mean, I can get get more for less. Would you say that any, like, is there any bourbon that exists? Well, I won't say that. (laughs) Is there a bourbon? Is there a bourbon in my mind? Yeah, is there a bourbon that's at 75 that you say that is a great price? Because for me, I don't know if that exists. I think seventy five dollars is too much um, for a bourbon. Period. Let me think. Which is going to give me a lot of flack, but I don't care. I'm trying to think about what else I. Revelio ten year would be there, at that price. Yeah, because that that is right about there. But there isn't a whole lot really that falls into that. In between, it's either like a hundred or, or 60. like sixty. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I don't know. I'd have to look into it a a little bit more. But, and like I'm starting to get into secondary in my head as well. Because like people will even pay up to like 75 or 80 for just regular Blanton's. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's bizarre. And and stores will hike it up that high too. That's wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's really weird. What's that retail out? Like 40? 60. Just go to this. 50 50 to 60. Literally just go to this distillery at that point. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Exactly. I mean, but that's a a crapshoot, though. And if you're out of town, like... Sure. Drive here, get some. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, come visit us. Yeah. Come say hi. (laughs) Um, So, I I mean, have there been any, like, barrel proofers that you guys, like have really taken note of that have really stood out to you I mean, obviously. I mean, I know what you're going to say. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, the WLW was a big, a big win for all of us. That was the one we loved, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was the second review of the, of of the show. That was the one after the, the flight fight, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's it for me because I, other than the ones we've done on this show, I don't think I've ever like really sought it out. 1792 foolproof. Yeah, that was good. I've not had a bad 1792 bourbon, I have to say. They're great. That because Elijah would, Craig guy would take note of too. We Elijah. tried it. We tried it on the live stream. Oh, the barrel proof ones. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Those were really oh, good. Oh man. Um, yeah, I've not had a bad uh, Elijah Craig uh, uh, Elijah Craig barrel proof I release yet. Um, Blanton straight from the barrel, of course. Yeah. Um, Booker's is consistently. I mean, it, it's always uh, barrel proof too. 
um, which we'll get to here in just a minute. Mm-hmm. I w- out of all the ones that we just said, I would say that Stag Jr. was not on my... You know what? I kind of... Not as what I would say, oh, when I'm talking barrel proofs... If we're talking a top 10, I'm I don't... Not- I don't even know if it would be in top ten. Yeah, I don't and think if it, it were, it. it would be on the lower end of the spectrum. Yeah, I think. It, I mean, I think it's good. I just don't think it would crack my top ten or top five of barrel proof bourbons. So, out of the two that we've had so far, between the Maker's Mark cast strength and the Stag Junior, what do y'all prefer? Maker's Stag. Really, I'm really torn <laughs> between the two. Which is good for this topic. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, sorry, um, it's just. They're they're completely different animals. Yeah, <laughs> one's a stag and the other's the mark of a maker. Um, nothing? No, really? We'll just no. I mean, okay, we'll just the stag was obvious. I didn't give it a mark of a maker. <laughs> I, was just, I knew you were you were yeah, stretching for the mark thank, of the maker thank you, one. <laughs> thank you. I was. It's hot in here. Um, <laughs> um, they're they're two completely different products. I mean, Maker's Mark Cast Strength is a weeded bourbon. So it's naturally going to be sweeter. Yep. Stag Jr. has rye in its recipe, so it's going to have a lot more spice to it. So it's almost, I mean, it's almost... That's probably why I like the stag better. Yeah, yeah, because it does have a little bit of a brighter note yep. to it. I see that. Um, but the, the Maker's is a little bit more rounded, I guess. Like, it has smoothness to it, but I don't know if the smoothness, meaning, like, not a whole lot of burn or anything... You know, lends itself to its quality. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am firmly in the middle. I feel very strongly both ways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that about does it for that, I think. For this episode. All right. Bye. Bye. Later. Later. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move on to our uh, review then of the Booker's Front Porch Batch. Booker. Why did you say it like that? I don't know. That what was, was a little that? afraid of. Like, it almost sounded like a, like, like an N sixty four banjo kazoo. <laughs> oh, it really did. <laughs> yeah. Or like a uh, Donkey Kong. Yeah. Something or other. I thought it fit. I just kind of made it up. Bookers. Yeah, almost a little bit of the uh, the Crash Bandicoot mask. Yeah, yeah. Ooka, book, a, a book. <laughs> okay, so uh, Bookers twenty seventeen. Great game. Dash three. Yeah. Have you played the remaster? I have not. It's very good. <laughs> it's all three games for like 30 bucks it's fantastic um this is the third release of 2017 from bookers um this is which the what? Is a jim beam product uh this is the front porch batch it's the third release from 2017 okay um why is it called the front porch batch well i'll tell you tanner thank oh, you for God. asking um so it would be quick so no it, <laughs> to make it short um booker no used to be the it it's from the uh the box that the Tanner's looking weirdly. Is that the box? Yes, that's the box I love over the there. Box. Yeah, no, I love the box Booker's box. Better than the bottle. Um, so every release of yeah, Booker's with the bottle in the box, even better. Oh, it's yeah, great it's package. Great. So, yeah. anyway. um, every release of Booker's comes with uh, a little, a little note, cat. I guess. Yes. <laughs> hello, hello, <laughs> Knox. Um, comes with a little story about you know where this batch originated and and what makes it special and everything and basically. Um, what it boils down to is that Fred No, who is the master distiller now at Jim Beam, mm-hmm. his dad was Booker No, which okay. is who this the is namesake. named after. Yeah. Um, and famously, um, when Booker was about to die, because he, he passed away a few years ago, mm-hmm. um, he looked at Fred and he said, Fred, don't let them touch my Bookers. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this one, this release specifically, um, is kind of an homage to those days that, uh, Fred remembers spinning on his front porch with his dad. Gotcha. Um, so it, it, you know, emulates a lot of those or it evokes a lot of those, right. um, thoughts and feelings and everything. But anyway, um, it comes in at... 125.9 proof. Uh, it is six years, five months, and 25 days. Um, that is so very specific. It is very specific. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Um, we won't go through... I, here's what I'm going to do. All right. I've read through the tasting notes on this so far. Uh-huh. 
Um, let's uh, let's test it out before we, right. we go through some of it. Um, so first off, what do you guys think about the nose? First of all, I'm a little stopped up because it is allergy season. Well, maybe that's why your your maybe, palate maybe, and your nose isn't maybe, working today. Maybe. <laughs> But it's pleasant yeah. from what I can get through my nose. It's a little floral. Yeah. Yeah, I get a lot of the floral. Yeah. There's also a very Almost strong... Hibiscus-y. Say what? Almost hibiscus-y. Hibiscus-y? Yeah. Yes. Hibis- like hibiscus-y. Okay, yeah, I see that. I see that, yeah. A little honeysuckle? Yes. A little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's also got a bit of, like, baking spices on the nose as well. Then of course your your sweetness. Your standard sweetness too yeah. with the But I wouldn't say that there's a whole lot of barrel influence that comes through. I'm gonna say something that I've never said on the show before. No. Okay, go I'm for it. it. This is a very pretty bourbon. It is. The color is I have to agree with almost you. Almost ideal for a bourbon. And, and and yeah, this is kind of what I would expect a bourbon to look like if yeah. you uh you poured it. Yeah, that is good. Um It's just nice. If I were to describe something as bourbon color, this is the color I'd be talking about. There's a bit of, like... You guys are going to look at me weird. Uh-huh. Tomato soup? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll ever look and at never, you never that weird. Never that one. Yeah. There's a bit of, like, mintiness on the, okay, on the nose, too. Okay, I get too. that. It's the, back to that floral thing, right? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Um, but I think it also is kind of lending no, itself actually, to some of the spice as well. I absolutely get mint. Yeah. I Now that you've said it. This totally pick up on that yeah I it's can tell you right now that the nose is gonna get a good score for me yeah, yeah it's great. I agree it's so full it's so different it's really too. nice yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well I mean the only thing I would slide it on is you're not getting a a ton of barrel influence yeah I mean I agree Could but I, I think that Which um, I don't no I think that it, that's so small that it doesn't really yeah and like the nose is just so powerful that it doesn't seem to like it's not gonna detract from the fact that um, <laughs> Tanner's making faces. Um, it's not going to detract from the lack of a barrel influence on the nose. Mm. But I will say, though, the barrel influence definitely comes through on the palate. Yeah, it does. I mean, it, it tastes... Oh, yeah. It tastes like... That totally switches. Yeah. yeah. It no, like it you really bit some wood. Yeah. No, exactly. A little I mean, bit. It, like, it reminds me huh. so much of what like a Rick House smells like. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Um, yeah. That's really weird. Weird in a good way or weird in a bad way? We, I don't know either. I don't. I don't know yet. Mm. I don't hate it. I like the nose better. It's vi- yeah, me too. But it switches it so much on the palate that I. I mean, I don't like. I don't dislike the palate either. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. It's like two different bourbons. It's, yeah. Like literally two like, different bourbons. Like what happened? So to, to like <laughs> to like break it down on the palate, the front end maintains like a lot of the spice. Yeah. Um, and like a hint of vanilla while the middle kind of becomes this really full flavored bourbon where yep. the the oak influence yeah um and some of those floral notes shine through and yeah, then on like the, the back end level. and yeah yeah in the back end of the palate is where the all of the sweetness yeah. tends to hang out yeah and then the finish just coalesces everything in from the, the same yeah. yeah yeah and and just makes it this really well-rounded product yeah. and like yeah the finish is the best part. This honestly it's like enough surprise. It's like enough supr- like you expect something and then it surprises you. And yeah, then, like it's like hey, we'll come it. We'll bring bring it back around. Yeah. yeah. How like, like you, how about you like both? I'm not going. You know we we've gotten, <laughs> for lack of a better word, giddy over some bourbons on this show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not giddy about this bourbon. No. But no. I will say that this is one of the most pleasant experiences I've ever had. Yeah, it's not with, bad. With yeah. the bourbon. I mean, just all the way through, it just really seems to evoke the quality that Booker wanted to set forth. Yeah. And and I think that Fred did a really good job, um, you know, maintaining those ideas. For sure. Um, that he wanted to evoke with, with this release. So, yeah. I mean, I'm... What, uh, what price does it say that? Um, okay, so here's the thing about Booker's. Uh-oh. A couple of years ago, Booker's was about 55 to $60. Okay. Okay. And then I think early last year, or mid of last year, I can't remember for sure, um, 
Jim Beam announced that they were going to be hiking up the price to $80. Whoa, okay. And it's a big jump. And actually, I think that originally what they said that it was going to be 90 or 100 mm-hmm. um, to meet, really to meet demand. Demand. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But it seems like they caught so much backlash from it yeah. that they backed off to about 75 to $80. Okay. That being said, you can find it anywhere from 65 to $80 now. And this was... Yeah, that's what I thought, because I was like, I've seen... <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, uh, Kroger, Wine and Spirits, typically has it for about 66 67 Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's where this was purchased. Um, okay. And, and, by the way, going with the whole father theme again, this was sure. a, a graduation present hey. from, my, from my dad. Thanks, Dad. To you. It's good. So, it's funny that, like, you know, he happened to get the one that was, like, most linked to... A dad. A dad. Yeah. Sure, yeah. For, did he know that? I don't think he did. Don't think I don't think there's any idea. Pick it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Huh, that's funny. Um, so, anyway, yeah, this was, I'm gonna guess, at at most, $70. Mm. Um, I'm just not, I'm not upset with this. No. At all. No, not at all. Um, the price may be where it falls a little bit short, but... At the same time, I think it's just, excuse me, I think it's justified in the quality of the product. Oh, yeah. It's so consistent. It is. It's just so consistent and yeah. surprises you, but also, like, I don't know. I enjoy it a lot. Me too. I have to agree. I'm not giddy, like you said, but. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not a, it's not a jump up and down over exuberant kind of experience. Sure. Yeah. But I'm it, trying to, like, it, relate it to something, so, like, just, like, a, I don't know. It's I hard wanna, to. Like, there's the, there's not a lot. Well, I'm meaning, like, not like bourbon-wise. Like, how do we... Oh. You ever leave a movie? Like, metaphor-like. <laughs> and you think... That was Because I have a little bit of That one. was good. Not, man, I am so ridiculously excited to go see that movie again. Not, like, a big superhero movie or something like that. Like, that was just a solid film. I'm glad I paid my money for it. Yeah. I enjoyed my time there. I might get it once it releases or watch it on Netflix or whatever. That was a good film. That's just bourbon for me. For me... I think that's fair. For me, this is this is what I've been playing with in my head, and it's not fully, fo- like, formulated yet. But it's like, you know, as like as a kid, you always, like, th- think of a, like, a, your long childhood home. Okay? And... You've that, had so okay. many great memories in it and and things like that. And you leave and, you, you know, you come back and, like, what I was kind of... And you come back and it's, like, you know, it's just the same as it was. You're never so super excited about it, but it's familiar. Yeah. And it's yeah. something you always want to, like, kind of draw back to every once in a while. You know what it makes me think of? And, like, building off of, like, the, the childhood theme. It makes me think of, like, when you were a kid and you had, like, your go-to toy you know mm. like this is kind of like it oh, does okay, have that familiarity that. to yeah. it and like it's, you it's it, it has it has what you expect but you're always kind of having new experiences yeah. with it and like it and like the the reason i say like experiences is like you know when you're a kid you're playing with your toys or like you're yeah. constantly your imagination's constantly turning yeah. and everything and, and this like, just kind of has that feeling of Every time I sip it, something's going to change a little bit, but it's not going to deny me uh, the the pleasure of revisiting what I enjoyed before. Yeah. It's like, so. the, I don't know, I'd, I'm stuck on the childhood at home thing just because, <laughs> like, you come in, your mom's making, you know, dinner or yeah, something. for sure. And you leave, but it also has the moments of, like, you come in, you know, nothing happens that night. Mm-hmm. You're just watching, you know, TV, yeah. but you still have those good moments. There's nothing bad about it, but nothing, like, you know. Yeah. So do you want it's me consistent. to do you want me to read the uh please, I'm curious. Okay. Um I'm gonna skip over like where all the barrels came from and everything. Um but because it's comprised of uh um barrels from or six different look at wait a minute, hold on, sorry. Seven different production date barrels, uh six different locations within three storage warehouses. Um so that doesn't that doesn't matter. What I'm getting at, though, sorry, um, is that 
uh, Fred No provided some tasting notes for this. He said the nose of this batch has an, uh, a hint of toasted butterscotch with some caramel. Hmm. I get more butterscotch on the palate than I do yeah, on the nose. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, especially on the like on the on the finish and like the mid to back yeah. palate. Um, flavor is well balanced with a shorter finish than normal for bookers. This batch is perfect to sip on while sitting on your front porch on a warm summer day, just like Dad used to do. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> We're marketers. That's a little bit of bullshit. Yeah. I mean, just a little bit, sure. Yeah. But uh, You can say that about literally any bourbon and sure. be like, oh, sure, yeah. I don't know if I would <laughs> if I would consider this a, a porch sipper, though. No, me neither. You know? Like, it um, It seems to be too, too complex. Mm. You know? I'd rather have something that uh, is a little bit more familiar and doesn't kind of challenge me too much if I were going to be doing like a, a front porch all day <laughs> i don't know if i'd want a barrel strength for front porch sipping. i don't think i would either i don't think it would it's either. too harsh see i'm this is where i'm like it's not an all day like front porch sipper like you know all day with your son type deal i think i think it's like a Here's you got what's a bourbon you got home from work and it's like 10 o'clock yeah no i get that and you're just having a glass of bourbon before bed and like your son it's a good happens, bourbon. yeah. And your son happens yeah. to come out, and you're like, you start having like talks with them. I see like, what you're saying. You know. Didn't know where the story was going. Really. Yeah, no, that's what he had him the bourbon. No, <laughs> the no, celestial body, the sun, that's all of a sudden I, decides <laughs> to pop back out and oh, say, hey, "Get up, yeah. get up, boy, I'm the sun." <laughs> that's just what I, I was thinking. I think it's more of like, give me some of that sun. on the porch, like having deep <laughs> kind of talks. Yeah, no, I get like that. life talks. Yeah, whether start watching, whether yeah, whether it be like. As a young child or as, you know, him being like, you know, 30, 40 years old talking with his dad. Yeah. You know, would I think you, it's more of like a life talk porch. Would story. you guys think that this is accessible for a first time drinker? No. No. Okay. Absolutely not. I think that this is a next step. Yeah. Yeah. Not you, necessarily. no bourbon, this yeah. might be a, well, this also exists. Sure. I and I don't think that it's like a second or third or maybe even fifth. But I think that it is kind of what will introduce you to the world of barrel-proof bourbons. Yeah, I'm 100% with you there. You I would know? put this at like a third. You if think? If we're going up to five. Explain your reasoning. <laughs> Show your work. Point counterpoint. Like, <laughs> you're just talking like out of scale, like, like how many steps of there going into more complex and like... Oh, I, th- I took groups, right? Or how did how I are, took it as like their third bourbon they're trying, their fourth bourbon they're trying, their fifth bourbon. They're oh, trying. is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about stages as a bourbon drinker. Oh, okay. Like that was wrong. And uh, we're we're going to talk about this more in a future episode. Yeah. Um, like milestone bourbons. Uh. You know, like your first milestone is usually just a shot or a, a bourbon and coke. You know. Okay. And the next one is like, you know. Oh, well, I'll drink it on the rocks. And then it's okay. like, I'll try it neat. And then I'll try something that somebody else recommends. And then I'll kind of stick it. We're at it. five? That, I mean, wait, loosely five. I think five. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I misunderstood. Yeah. I think that it's anywhere from five up in terms of like, yes, yes. You know, a, a journey. Yeah. From bourbon. what those steps were? Yes, of course. Yeah. I wouldn't, third, definitely not. No. <laughs> this is nowhere no. close. This is like way too complex. Well, no. For, I mean, this, and, and, and I like, don't know. I think it's all kind of BS a little, right? Like, <laughs> sorry, not to shoot. I mean, I shoot get your it. I understand. Down, no, I understand like, where you're. You can try a bourbon whenever. I wouldn't show this to someone as their first bourbon, but like no. saying that I don't know if I like the idea of milestone milestone bourbons. It's like they're saying there's like milestone movies that once you've been watching movies for five years, you can now watch Citizen Kane. Like, that's weird. I, no, I... You watch I, Citizen Kane first. It I doesn't get that. matter. Uh, but I bourbon. also see, like, in the terms of the movie, like, reference, oh, I'm going to make you watch, like, Harry Potter 3, and you not really know what's going okay, on. Okay, I don't think it's that linear. I get the argument for maybe, like, you shouldn't... Someone's first movie shouldn't be Requiem for a Dream. Like, yeah, I get yeah. that. <laughs> but I think, like, once they're into the point of, I've seen film, then you can show them Requiem for a Dream. I don't yeah. think there's... Such a progression that that has followed. No, I, I agree with that. 
I'm just saying you're not leading off with the Godfather, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just think there's like a happy medium between the two. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like not to be so like snobbish that you're like, oh, you're not there yet. Yeah, you're not there yet. No, just wait. You're too young. And that's not that's not what it is at all. Like it's not a it. And maybe it's not fair to say that there's a consistent linear progression either. And it's definitely not fair to say that there's a consistent no. linear yeah, no, progression for, for bourbon drinkers or for your bourbon journey. Um, but I definitely don't think that this is... Uh, hey, you've had bourbon before. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's you like, like makers. Yeah. Try, yeah or I know you, or you're a Jim Beam slash Evan Williams slash makers slash It, it you know, requires whatever. a yeah. palette to yeah. have been made. There's, a, been yes. made. There's yeah. a super happy medium there. Yeah. Because yeah. like... I'm with that. Like I was saying earlier when I was talking about the uh, B-Tech that we mm-hmm. had. I didn't. I, was, I wish I was... And I'm probably still... There's still a point where I was like, man, I wish I could have enjoyed that. Like recognize what I was having and I enjoyed it and been able to appreciate it more. Cause when I had it, I was like, this is good. But I didn't sure. know. I couldn't decipher why I was yeah. just like, eh. this is definitely one of the most unique bourbons I've ever had. Agreed. Like it doesn't taste like I could pick this out of a lineup. I think you could. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I think I could too. It doesn't taste like other Jim Beam products. No, not at all. You know, like I, uh, like I was saying, I just had um, Old Granddad One Fourteen. Completely different from that. I mean, the Old Granddad One Fourteen maintains like a very primarily like peanutty flavor mm. with caramel. This takes that and just blows the roof off of it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and becomes another animal entirely. Mm. Um, but anyway, and I think that's enough postulating. We need we probably need yeah, to move on to sure. our uh, our we're... actual review. Yeah. Um, so Tanner's choking. Um, <laughs> Sorry, water went down the wrong pipe. Um, Sucking down that water. I like water, man. So we have a review system on the show of nose, palate, finish, and price. Each category is out of five, and then at the end we tally everything up to a total out of twenty. Uh, so who wants to go first on this one? Tradition Anybody? that I go right. It is tradition, but you oh, know what? Traditions were meant to be broken a little bit. So, so I'll, I'll go. So okay, go for sure, it, yeah, or right. I can go. I don't yeah, care. I'll go. Okay. Actually, Perry's never went first, but no, I'd be happy to go. Perry, lead the way. Perry, yeah, you got All it. All right. So the nose for me is a four in that it is is so well presented in terms of like all the things that you would think it's going to offer. Um, it's really, really inviting. It's not. I mean, it's not the best nose that I've ever yeah. nosed, <laughs> but it's so well done that I'm, uh, you know, I'm definitely not upset with it. Um, I'm really struggling with the palette on this one. Like, it's not, a, it's not I'm a at. five. And I don't even know, like, it's not, it's not even a 4.5, but I would, I would well, what'd you give the nose first off? I gave the nose a four. Okay. I kind of want to. I'm gonna give the the palette a four as well. I think. Um, but they're fours for different reasons, in that like <clears throat> they're almost different animals. Mm. I mean, there there's so much going on in each instance. <coughs> Excuse me. That. I mean, it really is just two different experiences. <clears throat> if they complemented the, each other a little bit better, I think that is what would bump me up to a five on the yeah. palette. Yeah, I want them. Yeah, I want them to mesh better. You know, yeah, but I don't think that the the palette does the nose justice, or and vice versa. And vice versa. Right. Yeah. 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 For sure. There's a discrepancy there. Um, so anyway, the the palette for me is a four. Finish, I think I'm going to have to give a... I think I'm going to give it a 3.5. Um, okay. While it's good, I just wish that it went on a little bit longer. Interesting. Um, I, I wish that I could continue tasting this. You know, and I do still get some of the sweetness on the finish. Yeah. Like, it is really lingering on my tongue, but that's about all that I maintain on the on the finish. 
Now, here's the tricky one. <laughs> At its ceiling, Booker's is an $80 bottle of bourbon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Lowest, about 65 Mm-hmm. That's not an awful price for a barrel-proof bourbon. You know, if we're, if we're just talking lowest point. But... I mean, I've seen Maker's Cask Strength for $40, $45. So I'm probably going to have to give it a three. Um, do I love this bourbon? Yeah. Are there other bourbons that I love more and would prefer to spend that money on? Absolutely. I, like would, much, I would much rather buy two bottles of Henry McKenna, I think. Okay. Um, I mean, I would agree on that, but it's know. not a... Well, yeah, it's not barrel-proof. Um, I don't know. It, it is... Ah, daggone it, Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> not to get too technical Okay, no, 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 it's just... fine, because you, you bring up a good point. Well, <laughs> you didn't bring this up, but... You You're ins- also saying, like, I'm you, getting two bottles. You inceptioned yeah. this point into my brain, <laughs> which was that there aren't a whole lot of barrel-proof bourbons, period. Well, besides that fact, I just I just think you have to compare it to another single bottle, not buying two bottles. Okay, yeah. so Elijah Craig barrel-proof usually runs 60 to $80 as well. Okay. Mm. I would much rather. You'd much rather have that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I think I probably would too. It's the same price though. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the three. <laughs> After all that. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so that brings me up to uh, 14.5 out of 20, I believe. 4, 4, 8, 3.5, that's 11. Point. Yeah, 14, uh, 14 and a half out of 20. Gotcha. I, I think that's. That's fine. Yeah, it's, it's a recommend. Great. I mean, it's a great... Yeah, it definitely is a recommend. But at the same time, each Booker's release is different. You know? Yeah. I mean, we're reviewing specifically the third release of 2017, the Front Porch Patch. And that's... I didn't know that. You didn't know that there are different releases? No. Oh, really? I did not. Okay. I not either. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. And well, I would probably try it yeah. more often than I would... Um, we need to have my favorite release then on the show, um, which is called Off Your Rocker. <laughs> nice. Um, and is really, really, it's about the same, uh, proof range, I think. I think it's like 128 to 129. Um, but I'll, I'll bring a little bit on, yeah. um, for the show as well. Yeah. Well, I'll go now. Anyway. Yeah, go for it. Um, I will say the nose, I mean, I thought it was, <laughs> I mentioned that earlier. I thought it was really good. Uh, just the floral, the, you know, the honeysuckle, the, um, what did you say about it? Uh, hibiscus. The hibiscus, <laughs> yes. Uh, I just thought Specific it was, it smelled color. really great and sweet and kind of just floral. Inviting, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I give that a, I give it a four. Yeah. Uh, the palette, that's where I'm like, the palette's where I'm like, I don't know what to give it. I, I mean, I do, but I'm just like. I would have to give it. I. It's okay. Which I feel like. Go ahead. Know, it's okay. I'm gonna have to give it a three. Okay. It just is so complete. Wow, so scathing. Yeah, I know. With a three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to give it a three. I mean, I thought it was good. It's just so completely different that I don't know if I can give it anything higher. Uh, it's just so much. It's so robust in the sense when you're expecting something else. It just shocks me. And uh, going back on what you were saying earlier in the episode, like I think at the very beginning, where you said that what shows like a super quality bourbon is when you know you have the nose that keeps with the the palate as well, and and also expands upon it, and expands yeah. upon it, yeah. yeah. And I don't think the palate necessarily expands upon what the nose. I think you lose a lot of the nose in the palate. So I give that a three, and then finish. I thought that was I I had liked it but more than you did. Uh I'll give it a 4 or a 3 and a half. I think a 3 and a half is better. I gave it a 3.5 as well. <laughs> oh, sorry. 
<laughs> Sorry. It's I, okay. No, it's I fine. thought it was better, no. but uh, <laughs> three and a half. Well, we liked it for different reasons. Like yeah. I liked it because it maintained whatever what, what the palette provided. Yeah. But what docked it for me is that it just didn't keep going. Mm-hmm. I'm switching to a four. Sorry to be okay. wishy-washy on that. <laughs> sure. I'm no, switching to a four because I liked, the more I think about it, I liked how it brought everything together yeah. in the finish. Mm. It brought the florals and the the more of the barrel notes yeah. and brought it all together. And that's why yeah. I liked it better than the actual palette. Sure. And then price, I'll give it, um, I'll give it a four. Okay. Any particular reason or just straight up four? What is it? To eighty or sixty? If it's sixty, I'm giving it a four. If it's eighty, I'm giving it like a three. Do it in the middle. It's seventy. Three and a half. Okay. Sure. Yeah, here. Well, that uh, levels you out with me at fourteen point five out of twenty. Tanner, I though, I have this feeling. I have this feeling about Tanner. Okay. That uh, something's. <laughs> Something's about to happen. The hammer's about to drop. Hammer How is so? about to drop. I want to know. I want to know what you're thinking. I don't, I don't think thinking. that you're going to be as favorable on your on your review. So here's the thing. Okay. Uh, I've been quiet. I I know s- you have. You've been so, contemplating in the corner. Yes, I have. So here's the thing. I think I said here's the thing twice. Here's the thing. My I agree with you guys <laughs> on most of the points actually. Um, the nose I thought was wonderful. Mm-hmm. It did pass my candle test. If anyone was wondering, <laughs> the long running in what I buy is a candle test. Uh, so I'm also going to give that a four. Okay. Uh, the, the palette. Here we go. <laughs> I actually didn't hate it. I thought that my overall, uh, I'll get there later. I'm going to give the palette a three. Okay. I'm going to explain all these in, in jest. Right. Uh, the finish is a four for the same reason Curtis list with the sort of with the flavors being ameliorated in the in the nose and in the in the palate. The price what was that uh, ameliorate, not emulate. No, ameliorate. Really, that's a... put together. I think. <laughs> I think so. I've never heard that word, never heard that word before. Sorry, I, uh, I called you out on something. No, 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 that were okay. my uh... Tanner usually knows way more vocabulary than I do, so <laughs> he I'm always got an A on his vocabulary. Yeah, I have to I'm look it up now. As we're talking about something, I'm saying. sorry. I feel like a jerk. No, no, no. You're totally good. Um, so. That leaves me with price. Yeah. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. This bourbon, I'm going to say for conversational sake, sets at $72 because it's between 65 and 80 Life is about experiences. <laughs> and I think that this bourbon is so worth experiencing that I'm going to give this a four. And I've never wow. given wow. anything of price that. a four. I don't think ever. Maybe I have. But... Here's the, I, I feel like this is... Let's find out. I feel like this is the gift bourbon. I think this is a conversational bourbon. I think that's a good point. I think this is something you keep in your shelf to try with people who know bourbon and have you had this. Mm-hmm. It's very, very interesting to me. I think. Would that, you say you would sit out on a porch... No, it's not a pork sipper at all. No. See, I still think To me, this that. is... I think what you were describing is what I... See as being a port zipper. See to me, this is. But I get where you're. I have buddies over who like bourbon. You got to try this bourbon. We're gonna do the same thing that we just did here at the table, and you've got to experience this. Um, this is surprising to me because I literally in this episode said I don't know if a bourbon exists that I would give a seventy five dollars for. I think I would give seventy five dollars for this bourbon to have it on record. Huh. Okay, this That's is awesome. a first. That's surprising. This is a first. This is the first time that Tanner has ever scored anything higher than either of us. I know. Had. I was going to say this is the first time I've been higher than yeah. you. Cause yeah, because we yeah we both gave it a fourteen point five, and he gave it a fifteen. Yeah, you have given a, a price score of four before, though. Have I? Um, Something really cheap. Let's I see. Assume. Nope. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, old Rip Van Winkle ten year. You gave a four for an overall score of fifteen out of twenty. Interesting. Um, 1792 foolproof you gave a four for yeah, a total score sense. of for a total score of 15 out of 20 so 15 is my max <laughs> I will I say um is there going over 15 yes what uh, I give a 16 Blanton's gold and Blanton straight from the barrel both 16 out of 20 interesting I'm a Blanton's guy and Elijah Craig's small batch 16 out of that 20 that makes sense 16 yeah. out of 20 total but you gave that a five on the price right yeah because yeah. I was like I put it in a bottle and 
Uh, you also gave Jim Beam White Label a five on price. Hell yeah. Because <laughs> it's cheap. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. a good buy. Yeah. I'm yeah. interested. We'll have, we'll have to talk about that later. It's good. Yeah, for I sure. I like it. For sure. I'm a fan of this. I okay. think, and I I think say, for experience alone, this is worth it. Yeah. 1792, I don't know. I just... The affinity of it, man. I just... Man. <laughs> Is there anything they put out that's not good? Have I had? I don't think I've had anything. I've had a. I, I actually have had but a seventeen ninety two single barrel. Yeah, that's the thing. Is I've had a single barrel from seventeen ninety or from Barton that's not been that good. But Man. consistently, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah it's it. It's really decent. It's really decent. So, anyway. I I think this is a, a a pretty hard recommend from all of us. From uh-huh. all of us, yeah, not Especially. quite as. Not quite as high as uh, the Elijah Craig Small Batch or anything, sure. but um, no. by the way, ameliorate means to improve often by combining things. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I looked it up just to make I'm, sure. I'm very sorry. I feel no, like no, you're totally such good. A you're jerk, totally good. I, no okay. worries. Okay. I, I just knew that he was. Had I knew that, that he was probably right, so I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like dumb words. <laughs> like he is smarter than I, so <laughs> we're just gonna go with yes. All right, so that wraps up our uh, review portion of the show, but we're gonna move on now to our infamous segment. Tips and bits. <laughs> tits and bits. It definitely sounded like you said tits and bits. I did. That time. Okay. I did, I did say tits and See, bits. It's hard. To, it's hard to say tips and bits <laughs> because, because I, of the same. I've done this. Yeah, I've done the same thing. No, I know. When I said it, you guys were like, "Oh, you said no, no, no," and I was like, "Yeah," because it's hard to say. I did indeed say. say tits and bits. Yeah. yeah. Well, it happens. It happens. Anyway. <laughs> I, guys, what are your tips and bits for this week? Curtis? Dead silence. Right. Here we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Never communicate. That's my tip. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. I know what mine is, but I want to see what Curtis is. <clears throat> what mine was? Yeah. Um, so my tips and bits are I'm going to let Perry because I still am contemplating between what I want to say. Okay. <laughs> I've got mine if you want me to go. Go ahead, sure. Two not? albums this week. Okay. Two albums dropped last week as of the recording of this episode. I don't know when it's going up, but... Uh, Next week. So two weeks ago. Yes. Two albums dropped. Uh, Kyle's album? Yes. Which is fantastic. I was about to say that. It's not heard very, it. very good. What's the name of the album? <laughs> I don't even know. Happy Barrel Proof Day, guys. Something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's this, purple with him on the cover, and there's like two rhinestones on his cheek. Yeah. It's okay, really... so just look up um, Kyle, look up Kyle 2018. Yeah, Kyle, yeah. It's like Higher Than Life or something, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, fantastic. Was very impressed by that album. Uh, it's just a fun, happy rap album. Uh, the singles off of it have been great. The first song is great. Uh, and the other album, which I was... So excited for I was gonna lose my mind. Mm. Um, I, I listened to this, so I had an amazing Thursday last week. I went to see Deadpool two for the first time. Yes, and then after that, uh, as I got home, Courtney Barnett's "Tell Me How You Really Feel" dropped. Dropped, yeah. Drop. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that. it was a fantastic day. Um, that album <laughs> lived up to my expectations in the wildest way. I was very scared that I was not gonna like it um, because the singles were like, yeah. But Tanner, it, by the way, is a unbelievable and unbelievable Courtney Barnett fan. Yes. I mean, just huge Courtney Barnett fan. Yeah. Um, and it was fantastic. I feel like if, if I can recommend it cause I was very worried that it was going to be bad. I feel like it's a good recommendation. Um, cause it's really, really, really good. That's, that's it. Music. Okay. I did, gotcha. a, did a couple music ones. All right. I got mine now. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I've been really getting into, um, more of like sneaker culture. Okay. And Me too, weirdly. Really? That's strange. Yeah, oh. we haven't even talked about it. Yeah, we'll have to. Uh, but That's weird. So, I think we're the same person sometimes. <laughs> I re- it really is crazy. Well, you guys do the same design work. We're very consistent. similar. Yeah, it's yeah. real weird. Yeah. It is real I weird. I swear we haven't talked about it. That's very yeah. strange. No, we... <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, if anyone knows us, like, we literally... It's the same thing almost It's not surprising. Time. It's and just we, strange. Yeah, and we don't talk about it. We just come together and they're like, yo, dude, did you do that? And he's like, yeah, I did the same thing. Yeah. It's strange. It happens all the time. Anyway, I've been really getting into <laughs> sneaker culture lately and like sneakerhead and I, I would like to get more involved with it. I, I mean, I won't say that I'm a sneakerhead by any means. I don't have that many shoes. Like, yeah, I just don't buy them, but I always keep up on it. Me too. And which is weird. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. I don't know why I keep up on sneakers, but I don't buy the shoes. Sure. Mostly because I don't have the money to do that. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. But I w- all day today, 
This makes me so mad, and this is more of a venting session than a tips and bits. <laughs> but love it. Here we go. <laughs> Strap in, everybody. <laughs> Therapy so, session with Kurt. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, all day today, I was on Nike sneakers app, which I guess that's that'll be my tips. Get uh, Nike sneakers app because they have the launches, like nice. the releases for all their stuff. It's awesome, sure. and you can pick up whatever you want. I mean, as long as you're quick to it, of course. Today, all day, I am on the sneakers app just looking through stuff. I'm looking on, like, websites and just looking up, you know, sneaker culture, stuff like that. Like, different shoes that are coming out. I go to lunch at at noon. No, I go to lunch at 1 and come back at 2. And I get back on my computer. And the Virgil Abloh, who does Off-White which is like a high fashion kind of mm-hmm. guy. With the text, right? Yeah. And this uh-huh. is the one with the, is this the one that has the red, yeah. uh, uh, yes. like lock thing? Yes, yeah. it has the zip lock. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, I get back. These shoes are awesome. I'm, I, kid, <laughs> I, I kid you not, I have been on that all morning. All morning. I'd been looking all morning. <laughs> Just, I didn't expect anything. Like, I didn't, and then I come back from lunch and I refresh the page Guess what they just decided to drop in between that hour? Oh I was God. not looking. His, his shoes. Was the, this the Chicago colorway, the blue and red? No. The 10 Air Jordan 1 prepared for takeoff. It's blue. And oh, yeah. That's the, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, so sick. So sick. I saw nobody, somebody on my feet got him. Nobody even knew it. <laughs> nobody even knew it. Okay. Sure. They didn't, no, I'm serious. Like, no, I, Nike I, didn't let any notification. Did I say no, you're wrong sorry, at sorry. any point in that? <laughs> He's really hyped up. I really am. I, 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 can, I can tell. Go. I can tell. <laughs> Nike gave no indication or, like, notification to people that this was dropping. And it dropped at 1 o'clock right when I left for lunch. <laughs> of course. But, but that's just, how, just a, how things always happen. Yeah, for I, sure. I got back and I was like, I hate my life. Because <laughs> just to put into perspective on this, these shoes are $190. You can flip them for about seven to $900 if you it's wanted insane. to. That's insane. Curtis, let me introduce you to the bourbon secondary market <laughs> where <laughs> I was gonna not say, as bad as where $50 bottles go for $500. I know, I know. Just... <laughs> I'm on those two. No, I understand. Those get I understand. Too. I understand. Yeah. Okay. So, what was your sneakers app? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Are you sure? It's yeah. So good. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's Love good. it. All right. Find somebody you can vent to. I think is that the core yeah. of uh, Kurt's group yeah. therapy. Is... Okay. So I'm I'm gonna recommend something that um, Kurt and I have both seen recently. Kurt watched it this week. Yes. I uh, neat the story of bourbon. I'm contemplating right. um, doing that. Brain animal thing. Yeah, I uh, it's Nate Blankenship. Shout yeah, out. Yeah, what's up, yes. Nate? Uh, Love Nate? They did an unbelievable job with this movie. Um, Tanner, you need to watch it so we can I do. do it. It's on Hulu now, right? Yes, it is on Hulu. Yeah, yeah. You can watch it now um, officially. So what? I, here's what. Here's what we need to do. Um, not next week, but the week after when we get back together. Okay. Um. I want to do a full episode, or the, or the next time that we're all back on together. Okay, yeah. okay. Like, we're not going to schedule that, on air. The fourth, I don't know. Okay, when we all schedule for us at work. when we all get together again, um, that episode is going to be um, the the episode where we actually talk about that movie okay, and, cool. and review it. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, I can do that for sure. Watch it. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do. I mean, it's on Hulu now. It's it not really, like you yeah, have to pay no for excuse, it or rent right. it or yeah, anything. I yeah. Have it reads so much less like a documentary and more of just kind of like this is what makes bourbon so special for us. Um, and I think if anybody is questioning <laughs> why we do what we do, and, you know, if you're listening to the show, it's not like you're going, I can't believe these guys are doing this or yeah, anything. Yeah, why are there this late in the episode. Why are there bourbon podcasts? But, you know... <laughs> It, it's such a good insight into our culture mm. of bourbon and, you know, the history and the longevity behind it and everything that, I mean, it, it, it just makes you appreciate it so much more. Sure. And I'll be honest with you, I cried. Really? Twice. Okay. Twice. Wow. Twice. I didn't cry. Yeah. But no. That's I, a lot. I cried twice. It is right. good. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so, I will say you're also very much more... 
and have more experiences with bourbon than I do. So. Yeah, I, yeah Same, but it sure. wasn't... To say it wasn't, like, bourbon-related is, just saw the is a beautiful mis- barrel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good. To say it wasn't bourbon-related is kind of a misleading statement. Well, but, sure. like, I mean, it had to do... I, I, I don't want to spoil anything if yeah, they we'll haven't seen it. it. We'll, we'll talk yeah, about yeah, it in yeah, a few yeah. weeks. But okay, anyway, cool. so... Yeah, people should listen to it prior... Watch, watch watch the movie prior? Yeah. prior yeah yeah you know it'd be fun nah we're not gonna do that but it'd be really funny to do like a commentary we'll track along. for it yeah to mystery science theater 3000 <laughs> i would just be dunking on it the whole time i don't even care if it's good <laughs> just be dunking riff tracks yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah anyway so that's my that's my one recommendation for the week i've got a whole bunch of uh, other things to recommend but i'm gonna i'm gonna save them so but arrest development season five is coming yeah, out next week so true. i am my yeah. uh, I'm freaking Amped. out about it. I'm real excited, guys. <laughs> anyway, I thank you all so much for listening. Uh, we really appreciate it, as always. If you want to follow us on social media, guys, where can they do that? Instagram, KurtCon, and then uh, Twitter, Kurt underscore Con 15. I'm at Dormstreams everywhere. 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 <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> okay. Um, if you want to follow me personally on social media, I am at pritter1492, pritter. just about everywhere. Pritter. So many people get my email wrong. Pritter, pritter. Prit, prit78 at gmail.com. Uh, and I'm like, no, it's prit. Mm. Come on. Get it together. Anyway. Um, if you want to follow the show, we are at my bourbon pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, you can head to bourbonshop.threadless.com for all of our apparel. Um other products too like we have notebooks and framed art that you can buy it's very weird but it's all up there if you're <laughs> you're interested in it what an ad um <laughs> it's very weird it's weird but it's there <laughs> much like me in middle school so my tombstone um, <laughs> <laughs> it was there. weird but he there, there. <laughs> um if you want to support the show uh financially um you can head to patreon.com slash uh my bourbon podcast um <laughs> for as little as a dollar a month uh you can keep the lights on in uh the old studio. Bourbon, bourbon kitchen studio yeah. studio pulling the curtain that back is definitely on not in a normal yeah. kitchen no nope. you, can, you nope. can keep the mics on no nope, there's yeah, there there's definitely there's not dirty dishes in the sink right now it's definitely not just perry's house <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you all again so much for listening to the show. We really appreciate it. Um, next week, we are going to have... <clears throat> excuse me. I love them. <laughs> next I love week, them, excuse me. <laughs> They're so polite. Yeah. And they really know how to win over a crowd, especially old people. I'm sorry. It's too far. I'm sorry. It's been a barrel proof right episode. Um, next week, we're going to have a very special guest. Uh, we are going to have mixologist... Matthew Leonard, uh, all the way from Knoxville, Tennessee, coming on and uh, showing us some uh, some tips and tricks about, or tips and bits rather hey, about, there you uh, go. geez, tips that and fits. bits about uh, uh, about cocktail craft. The movie and, uh, cocktail. The movie he's going to review mixolog- the movie cocktail right? yeah. with you. Yeah, he's a mixologist. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're going for, right? Is that not what I said? You said cocktail, the craft of craft. a cocktail. But did I did I not say mixologist earlier? He was just saying mixology would have been a better word there. Okay, well, he's going to show us some mixology he's tips. He's going to feel the yeah. bar <laughs> craft. <laughs> uh, he's also supposed to be bringing something special for us to try before Which he I'm makes it. Yes, about. yes. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, we will back with... Blah. Wow. We will back we with will back you. With you. Uh, we will be back with you next week. But until then, I'm Perry. I'm Tanner. I'm Curtis. And this is my bourbon podcast. That's the first time we've done that. Yup, that order is weird. Yeah.